What's up everybody? Welcome back to BlueBot Tech. I'm Zach and today we're going to be kicking off our BlueBot Bytes series of videos. Now these are going to be small, digestible, should be less than 10 minute videos uh, teaching essentially the basics. You know, things like how to solder or for instance today we're going to be going over how to flash a Node MCU. Now we're going to be covering both ESP8266 to include the D1 Mini and ESP32s. Now in a prior video, we went over the full startup with WLED, but we used a piece of software called ESP Easy. Now that software isn't readily available anymore, unfortunately, so you can find it on our GitHub. However, there are better methods. So today, specifically, we're gonna be going over ESP Tool, ESP Home Flasher, and then in the end, we'll even show you how you can potentially use ESP Home to flash a Node MCU directly from your Home Assistant instance running wherever you have it running. All right, I really hope you all enjoy this series. We're excited about it. Let's get started. Okay, to get started with installing and or flashing WLED to one of our ESP8266 or ESP32, we're simply gonna need to start out here at the GitHub page for WLED. That's done by AirCookie. We'll simply just scroll down here and we're going to want to scroll down to where we see the wiki link and jump over to that. Now the wiki is great. It has a really quick quick start guide and how to. And essentially, if you follow this, you're going to probably end up being successful. Um, we wanted to put the video together just in case anybody had questions on some of our upcoming videos. Uh, this is always going to be nice to refer back to. As you can see in the quick start guide, they have a couple wiring diagrams for different LED strips. So whether you're using you know, WS2812s or SK6812s, this is kind of what you would follow, along with what pins you would use for your data line, uh, whether you're using an 8266 versus a 32. Now, the easiest way to get started here is to just click this link here that I just want to use WLED. This is going to take us over here. Now, the way I generally do all of my flashing is via the, the first flashing method here, the ESP tool. As you can see, once we get all of that set up, um, AirCookie provides the exact commands you're going to need to run to get those uh, bins flashed. So let's go ahead and start off with the first step. So we'll hop over here to ESP tool to get that installed. Now this takes us to the Espressif uh, ESP tool GitHub page. Now you're going to need Python. So whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, today I'm using Windows. I figured I'd use Windows since that's what most people will use. We can hop over to python.org and you would download and then download Python. Also, um, Python is available in the Microsoft Store. So as you can see, if we hop over here and search for Python, we just simply want to download and install the, the latest version. Now Python is already installed on my computer, so I am good to go. So we don't need any of that. But obviously, if you need Python um, on Windows, that's how you would do that. If you need it on Mac or Linux, of course you can use your favorite package manager on either of those distributions. Okay, so here, what I like to do before we get our Espressif tool is go ahead and with Python, we can check which version we're using by doing a Python tag V. So here we have Python 394, which we're good to go. That's the latest version. And what I generally like to do because of you know, managing several different Python projects, I'll create what's known as a virtual environment. Now to do that, you would just do Python tag Python 3, tech M, and then V E N V, and then you name it whatever you want. You could name it V N V, or for this instance, we could call it something like W L E D. As you can see, I did do. So here we see at the bottom, I have my W L E D virtual environment ready to go. Simply CD into that, and then you can list that just so you can see. Now. As you can see, I've already downloaded the bins. I'll show you where to get those and move those over. I just didn't want that to be kind of a s slow down point in the video. Now to activate our virtual environment, we'll simply go to 
scripts. And we will type activate. Now ignore all of this. We're about to show you how to get that. Okay, so as you can see, just to recap, this WLED means we are in our active virtual environment. We can head over and get those release binaries that I already have. We'll head back to our w WLED install page and we'll simply need to click here at the download latest release binary. We pop that open. We scroll down, we see the latest binary is 0 0.12.0 and depending on which ESP you have, you'll simply download the associated bin file. So if you have an ESP32, you'll need the bootloader.bin plus the ESP32.bin and if you have an 8266, you'll simply need the 8266.bin. So go ahead and download those. Again, I already have those downloaded. Of course, you can get those and move them over with the command line, or if you're not very comfortable on the command line, you can simply download to wherever you download them, most likely your downloads folder, and then move them over to your WLED folder, which will be under that user. And of course, for me, it's Zaka. Okay. So once we have those, we're going to now head back to our command line and let's go ahead and get our um, ESP8266 plugged in. We can start with that one. So as you can see here, I'm working with a ESP32 right here and a D1 mini, which is essentially the same thing as a, it, it is an 8266. So I don't have the large format 8266 laying around. So that's why I'm using this. Now with an 8266, simply plug that in. As you can see, that power light comes on. Head back over here. And like we saw before on the WLED page, it's simply, you need to copy and paste this. So once we copy and paste that, we'll take this over to our command line and right click to paste that in. And then we will need to add the WLED and we need the 8266.bin. Go ahead and hit enter. So as you can see, it found the serial port and it's going to walk through the steps of connecting to and flashing this ESP8266. Okay, so as you saw, we did run into some issues with um, trying to flash the D1 Mini. Now, what this comes down to is I'm not normally set up on a Windows machine. And essentially what is going on is if we go over here and we check in our device manager, what we need this to show up as is one of our COM ports. Now, I did go back through and get all this working. So I'm gonna go over what I did to get this working. Now, if you see some sort of unknown adapter or unknown device, that's a good idea that you may not have the right drivers installed. So to get everything working, what I did was I went over to the Arduino IDE page and I downloaded that app. And if we pop open the Arduino IDE. And the reason I picked the Arduino uh, IDE is because they do have ways you can add um, links here so as you can see in the settings in the properties I added this additional boards manager URL and we'll include that again in the description below and clicked OK we'll go over to tools and boards now this did before say it was a generic Arduino board but I switched it over by going here and just generic ESP board and then I attempted to get some info but then also for the D1 Mini, I went and got D1 Mini specific drivers from the Wemos page. So go ahead and go there. And as you can see, I downloaded the Windows V3.5 driver. And now when I plug my D1 Mini in, as you saw prior, it is showing up in the, the COM port area. So We'll go ahead and go back over to our 
command prompt here, and we'll do ESP tool.py. We'll write underscore flash to 0x0. Zero zero. And then we want our WLED. 32 the 8266. And we'll hit enter. Okay, so now you can see things are working. It found that D1 Mini on that COM4 port. And as you can see, it's beginning to flash. Now we'll let this run through and I'll show you how you would do it on the ESP32. It's a little bit different because there are these two buttons on the ESP32 that you will have to hold down the, the one flash button until it begins uh, flashing and then you let go of it. That's the only difference and you really shouldn't run into a lot of driver errors with the ESP32 because I do believe it has some onboard driver handling. Okay, so as you can see, it's that easy, and this D1 Mini is now set up and should be broadcasting um, the WLED AP that you can then connect to via your Wi-Fi. So we'll go ahead and unplug that D1 Mini, and we will plug in our ESP32. Get that cord delay flat. Okay, so we'll head back over here into our command prompt. And we'll do essentially the same thing, but instead of writing that, we will write our ESP32 bootloader. So ESP32 bootloader.bin. As you can see, it's connecting, but we're going to have to hold down. Oh, I didn't even have to hold anything down that time. It just began writing. Now that our bootloader is done writing, we will do the exact same thing but we're going to write it at uh, hex 10,000 and need our WLED ESP32.bin. We go ahead and write that. Okay, and I'm not sure it's doing anything, so let's go ahead and just hold that button. Okay, and as you can see, once it starts flashing, I'm able to let go of that button. So I'm glad it did that, just to show that that does in fact work. And all right, we'll let this finish flashing and we'll be right back. Okay, and now you can see that our ESP32 is complete and finished flashing. Uh, it should be doing the exact same thing. It should be broadcasting that WLED AP, which would then allow us to connect to and as you can see, uh, the ESP32, when that little blue light is blinking, I don't know if the camera's catching that. But there you can see it a little bit. When that's blinking, uh, that's generally how you know it's now broadcasting that WLED AP. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop over. I want to show the second method that does provide a GUI instead of all command line and may be easier for some people. So we'll scroll down here um, to the flashing method too. ESP Home Flasher. We'll pop that open real quick. And as you can see, this just provides downloads. So um, depending on what flavor of operating system you're using, you just download what you need. So I'll go ahead and download that Windows 64 EXE and launch that. Okay, and as you can see, what that does is that gives me the uh, ESP Home Flasher GUI. Now, if you want and you are interested in, you know, kind of keeping this WLED uh, distro around on your home computer, what we can do is go into our scripts and we could simply pip install ESP Home Flasher. Okay, and as you can see, that should have done the same thing. So if we list that directory, Yes, we have ESP Home Flasher, and if I were to close this and simply type ESP Home Flasher, that should go ahead and, yep, pop open that for me. So you potentially would have all the same um, driver issues with this, so since we fixed them already, it should be fixed for this. And it is, so as we can see our COM3 here. now. If this wasn't showing up, we could do a quick refresh and hopefully it would show up. From here, you would simply browse 
to wherever you are storing that ESP32 bin, we would open it and we'd flash the ESP. So as you can see, it's going to connect to the serial port. And again, we may have to hold down that button. Yep, and then let go and it's connected and it should be flashing now. Okay, and as we can see, the ESP32 finished just fine here on uh, ESP Home Flasher, nice and easy. And this is generally how I choose to do all of my flashing. Now, I haven't run into any issues with uh, the, the bootloader issues back and forth with uh, ESP Home Flasher. So, you know, your mileage may vary, and that's kind of why I tend to uh, err on the side of caution and just go ahead and use the ESP tool. Now, just real quick, I wanted to at least make mention of it. If we hop over to Home Assistant, which most of you should be using, um, you can install ESP Home, and of course, that is installable through the supervisor and you would go to the add-on store and simply download ESP Home. As you can see, I have it installed here and I've just kind of thrown it on the sidebar. Now what you can do here is you can do over the air updates and whatnot, but what we would do is take our ESP32 or 8266, plug it into our Raspberry Pi or whatever's running that VM uh, if you're running a VM, you may need to forward those COM ports onto it. But once that would be plugged in, I could then go through this setup wizard to go ahead and create a firmware and write it to the device. Um, we won't go over that one today. If there is interest, definitely leave us comments below and we can go from there and throw up another video real quick. Otherwise, thanks so much. I hope this was helpful and I hope you know you don't run into too many issues but if you do i hope those troubleshooting steps certainly help you out as always thanks again we hope to see you in the next one